Welcome again to Uncle Don's Friday Night Cocktail Hour. And uh, as promised last week, we're going to make us today a drink that is the official drink of Louisiana since about June of 2008. And it's called the Sazerac. Now, before I get started, I want to just kind of give a shout out to two friends of mine, uh, Dave and Rob, who are uh, recovering from surgery. Uh, they're getting along just fine, I'm glad to say. So everybody give a shout out to my friends Dave and Rob, uh, that they have a great recovery and get back to normal life as soon as possible. All right, so we're gonna make a Sazerac. Now, going back to my cocktail hour about the old fashioned, I talked a little bit about this idea of what a cocktail is originally in 1806. It was described as being a potent concoction of spirits, bitters, water, and sugar. And we kind of use that as our basis to make an old fashioned, which is an outstanding drink, one of my favorite drinks on the planet. Well, some people will call a Sazerac an old fashioned with an attitude or an old fashioned with something to prove. Um, so that's, those are some great, great kind of quotes that I've heard about those. Now, the uh, Sazerac sometimes is, 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 is described as being probably the oldest cocktail that's ever been invented, but not really. Most likely it's this cocktail of spirits bitters, water, and sugar that became the old fashioned. That's probably, you know, the oldest, but, but who knows? Who really cares? It's a great drink. I'm going to teach you how to make it, and I hope you'll love it very much. So back in about 1850, there was this fellow who uh, uh, opened a bar called the Sazerac Coffee House in, in, in New Orleans, and uh, he started serving this drink that he called a Sazerac Cocktail. And his Sazerac cocktail and the original Sazerac cocktail recipe was made with cognac, um, a locally made bitters called Peychaud's by a Creole guy uh, who had moved uh, from Haiti uh, and opened up shop there uh, but, and, and gave his name to, to the bitters that we now know, know today. A little sugar and uh, absinthe. And that was a popular drink for quite a long time. But until about the 1870s, when there was this epidemic in Europe called the phylloxera epidemic. Now, phylloxera is a pest that's kind of related to an aphid, and it devastated the wine, uh, the wine growing grapes, the grape industry in Europe, and particularly in France for years to come. So, guess what? Where does cognac come from? It comes from France. So, without cognac available, they started making Sazeracs with rye whiskey, and that's kind of what we know today. And, and then the, the Sazerac in its original form was very different from about 1917 or so. Uh, I may be wrong on the date, but that's when the United States and many countries uh, outlawed the sale of absinthe because apparently it had some uh, apparent hallucinogenic uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, properties. But it probably wasn't so much that it was hallucinogenic, but some of the things that would go into making um, absinthe uh, may have been adulterated, causing problems. And plus, absinthe is about 55% alcohol, so it's nothing to, to snooze at. But absinthe became illegal, and then only until recently, in the last 10 years or so, I believe, absinthe is finally uh, available now once again. And, uh, but it's still strong, so be careful with it. So, so that's the story about the Sazerac and, and you know, its relationship to uh, uh, the old fashioned, uh, and we're gonna make it today. Now, it's not a real hard drink to make, but there is a little bit of work going into it. Basically gonna start out with two rocks glasses. Now, the first rocks glass, I'm just gonna put some ice in here, and we're just gonna let that kind of sit while I talk here so that it kind of chills. And uh, there we go. All right, so we're gonna set that baby aside. Now, once again, as far as my ingredients are concerned, I've got my good old Boulier rye. I love this rye whiskey. I've got a French absinthe called absinthe. Uh, very good. I don't drink it that much, so hence the small bottle here. I've got my Peychaud's bitters, which uh, again, again, the idea of a bitter is that it's like a seasoning for your cocktail, like, like salt might be a seasoning for your steak or your meal. A bitters is an aromatic kind of mix of all kinds of flavors distilled into this little bottle right here that, again, you look at it as like a seasoning for your cocktail, and it just kind of adds so much depth to a cocktail. That's why we use it. So there's the Peychaud's bitters. Now, for my sweet or my sugar, I've got some little brown sugar. Uh, these are uh, actually sugar in the raw sugar cubes that I, I, I enjoy very much. So we're gonna start off, first of all, with a sugar cube in the bottom of this glass right here. And then to that, we're gonna add 
three dashes of our Peychaud's bitters. So here we go. One, two, three, you know, add a little bit more if you want, but three to four is perfectly okay. Now to kind of help things dissolve a little bit and help us break down, mm, that smells good, break down that sugar cube. I'm going to put a little splash of tap water in here. Nice ice cold tap water. There we go. Not very much. You don't need very much. So we'll let that kind of swirl around just a little bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to muddle this. We're going to crush this up. So this reminds you a little bit about the old fashioned again, where we kind of muddle the sugar cube in the Angostura bitters with a little bit of water in the base of your glass. And again, these are our rocks glasses, uh, uh, great glasses to have on hand. Sometimes I'll keep some in the freezer and let them kind of chill for certain drinks, but you don't necessarily need this glass to be ice cold like you love your martini glasses to be ice cold. Your Manhattan glasses, great glasses uh, to have uh, chilled when you want a good cocktail. So we're going to muddle this for a while. So as I muddle this just to get it down really fine, I'm going to uh, uh, kind of tell you a little bit about why you muddle and ha how much muddling should you try and do. You don't need to completely dissolve all of the sugar, but you want all the clumps kind of crushed up so you have a little fine slurry of sugar at the very bottom so that after you make this drink and it has time to kind of sit and just rest a little bit as you sip on it, at the very end you get that nice little little swallow of, uh, of, of potent alcohol with a little extra sweet to it. It's kind of a nice end to this cocktail, but it's a great cocktail cocktail overall. So as I continue to muddle here, since we're not shaking anything today, I can't use my KC and the Sunshine Band, we're going to do a little muddling music, so take it over. <laughs> All right, so we've been muddling on this really good, and I got a nice little slurry here of, of, uh, of the Peychaud's bitters, uh, the uh, little bit of water, and then the crushed up, uh, crushed up uh, sugar cube. It's gonna be delicious. So here we go, next step now. Now, the next step, of course, is the addition of your spirits. So for this drink, I mean, you can use anywhere from a jigger, which is an ounce and a half to up to three ounces. Three ounces is what I typically use when I make my uh, Manhattans. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of take the half out of the middle, so to speak, and I'm going to make this with two ounces of my delicious Bouillet rye whiskey. And pour that guy right in there. All right. And then the next thing you're going to do is add a little bit of ice into that glass right there. You could have added it before if you wanted to. Nobody's going to get upset with you there. So put a little ice in there. And then the next thing we're going to do is my little cocktail stir. We're going to stir here. All right. So I'm just going to stir this and get it nice and cold, nice and cold. And that will also kind of help it dissolve a little of that sugar at the bottom as well. So again, we're making this part of your drink so that, you know, you add some of that cold to it. It just tastes delicious. So take it away, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Surprise. Okay, we're back now. So again, just like shaking a cocktail in a shaker, you know you've got a cold cocktail when you can see condensate and frosting on the sides of the glass. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set this aside for just a moment. Hmm, that's good. I can't help enough to drink of that. All right, now we go and we're going back now to our cocktail glass, our uh, rocks glass that we had the ice in. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to pour this ice out, plain and simple. It seems like a good waste for ice, but you know that's okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the absinthe to this glass because this is a glass where we're going to actually have the drink mixed in and that's what we're going to drink it out of. Now it says anywhere from a quarter of an ounce or so you want a nice little splash of absinthe in there and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to swirl this around and you're going to coat your glass with absinthe and you just kind of swirl it around try not to get it on your fingers too much or if at all and that's just going to swirl around there coat that inside of the glass add some of that 
that really, really exotic kind of French kind of uh, uh, flavor to, uh, to your drink. So after I've done that, I'm gonna pour that out. There we go. Now, I'm gonna stir this up just a little bit more, just to add a little bit more chill before we, before we pour this into the glass and take a drink out of it. I don't know if many of y'all have been to New Orleans, but it's a great place to go to. Wonderful place, excellent food, excellent music, excellent drinks. But you can get yourself into trouble really good in New Orleans, so be careful out there. All right, there we go. Now, I've got my little cocktail strainer right here. I'm gonna pour that right into this glass. There we go. And we'll just set that aside. And to top this off and garnish it, we're gonna use, again, nice little lemon peel. So don't be stingy with this. I'm gonna get, well, there we go. Jumped right off my peeler. What a day, huh? So I'm gonna peel this right off and just like I like my martinis to have a little bit of, you know, lemon oil in the top, I'm going to do the same thing right here on top of my Sazerac. And then I'm going to do something a little fancy here. I mean, you can do this if you want to. You don't have to do it. I'm going to take the lemon peel and I'm just going to roll it up on to my, my little stirring rod here and then take it off and then adds a nice little kind of decorative peel to your lemon peel and there you go that's uncle don's sazerac made from rye whiskey absinthe peixotes bitters a little brown sugar cube tiny splash of water and made with love so here we go let's give this a try oh yeah that's good you guys take care have a great weekend get better dave get better rob we'll see you guys next week Next week on the Uncle Don's Friday Night Cocktail Hour, we're going to make a champagne cocktail. So just stay tuned. We'll see you next week.